Let's talk a little bit about psilocybin. One of the questions was, what was the dose that people are typically being prescribed? To be perfectly frank, we do not know yet what is the ideal dose of psilocybin. What's called dose-finding studies have not been sufficiently car uh, carried out just yet. That being said, the answer on the ARS is 25 milligrams. Most people receive 25 milligrams as a single dose or as a multi-dose paradigm. Psilocybin is a serotonergic psychedelic. It itself is not pharmacologically active. It is a prodrug that is dephosphorylated to psilocin. And like all serotonergic psychedelics, it binds to many different serotonergic receptors, but also has effects at other systems like dopamine, has effects at glutamate and GABA, maybe even has effects on inflammatory systems. Perhaps people are looking at that as well. It also has breakthrough status as of 2019 by the FDA. Psilocybin has been studied most in people who have treatment resistant depression, where it's now in phase three development, which is late phase, people with major depressive disorder, which is not treatment resistant, people who have end of life, anxiety and depression, people who are in palliative care, cancer care, and also people who have alcohol, drug, or tobacco use disorders. Now psilocybin is probably the best known of the psychedelics being studied right now because of the way it's been studied. And this is just a reminder that when we're talking about where it's been studied, we have to be crystal clear which diagnosis are we considering. And I hear so often that people are giving patients psilocybin in studies, and the patient diagnosis is not always that clear. In fact, in many cases, people don't even have a diagnosis. And so when we actually delimit our scrutiny to those studies that meet a DSM criteria and have been conducted, conducted in a rigorous and adequately controlled way, we really only have about a few different diagnostic categories where psilocybin has been, at least for now, moved into mid-phase or late phase. Now psilocybin is being looked at for a whole variety of disorders, including not limited to autism, bipolar 2 disorder, obsessive compulsive disorder, migraine, body dysmorphic, anorexia nervosa, the list goes on and on. This was one of the earlier controlled studies where adults who had major depressive disorder, not TRD, major depressive disorder, were randomly assigned to take psilocybin now or be assigned to a wait list. You're gonna get it, but you're gonna to have to wait a month or two to get it. And this is open label, so you know the patient's taking it, they know you're take, they're taking it, you know they're taking it, but the randomization means you either get it now or later. And this is looking at change in depression scores across time. And this is showing a significant improvement. This is psilocybin combined with, with psychotherapy. This was obviously very promising. It's control, that gives a certain rigor to it. However, it is open label, everybody knows what they're on. And presumably, people who sign up for these studies, sign up to have a trip, are maybe people who have declared themselves as having a bias towards this type of intervention. I'll come back to that a bit in a moment. In addition to showing improvement in the depression scores, we also in fact saw improvement in depression scores in treatment-resistant depression. This is a study where persons had to have at least two, up to four prior antidepressant failures. And they received a dose, 25 milligrams of psilocybin, combined with a supportive psychotherapy. And the primary question of interest was, what was the difference between the two groups three weeks out? And did that sustain itself out to week 12? This was published in the last year. In this study, very hopeful, reported out that the 25 milligram dose, not so much the 10 milligram or the one milligram dose, was able to reduce depressive symptoms in a way that's clinically meaningful 
for a difficult to treat population that we all see on a daily basis. In fact, currently the FDA has only approved esketamine and olanzapine fluoxetine combination for TRD. We don't have a lot of options. And the magnitude of the effect here was impressive. Generally well tolerated. There were some reports of ideation of suicide, but I might expect that in this population. So in short, we have data in non-TRD, preliminary, which has been recently replicated by a group in Wisconsin. We have data in treatment-resistant depression. This is, in fact, a study we just finished at our center in Toronto where we gave people with TRD a small sample, 25 milligrams, two doses of psilocybin combined with the support of psychotherapy, sorry, and we have just finished it and we were able to replicate the finding I showed you earlier that is the waitlist control. Some were randomly assigned to have the drug now, some got it later. We replicated that, that finding. So we've now seen now replication. It's still mid-phase, not late phase, but very, very promising for this difficult to treat group. Now this is looking at the results from our study so far, and we showed a fairly rapid improvement in depressive symptoms in our study, led by one of my colleagues, Josh Rosenblatt. And we also saw improvement on critical PROs, quality of life, well-being, function. This sample was largely comprised of adults with treatment-resistant major depressive disorder. A small number of them also had treatment-resistant bipolar II depression. That's an area we're going to talk about this afternoon that we really have very few treatments.